Oh, it's a tough one, guys, but we are going to have to take it on the chin that we got Nuno at Anfield. Slot and this side coming off the back of the international break or not, absolutely got schooled by Nuno Spirito Santo. And frankly, I actually think that Nottingham Forest played a really good game. We'll get into that. We need to unpack some of this. I think it's worthwhile saying, yes, we should talk about some of the negatives, but I also think it's worth talking about some of the positives within there. There is a balance to this team and losing 1-0 to Forest, whilst it is not a preferable result, is certainly one that I've got to admit, during the international break and before that, we were considering where managers would exploit Liverpool. And I was, I had this video, I was, I was gonna put it out and it said, Liverpool will lose. Now. Obviously, I could have covered that myself off in that video and said, yeah, well, of course, I'm going to lose at some point. But I was saying, against a manager who has a really solid midfield that can get into that area just in front of the, like, the penalty area, and they've got lots of good shooting from distance players, Morgan Gibbs-White, Cam hudson Adoy, James Ward-Prowse, good on set pieces. And then on top of that, and you'll see it in the preview as well, they'll be able to get into those areas that get in between the lines, the two and the four, or the two and the two, and exploit that, and... Then another thing he did that I thought was really fantastic on their part for Forest, obviously, they got in between our centre backs and our full backs and exploited that space between the two. That's when Morgan Gibbs White, when he had the offside shot, was there, etc. etc. So there are loads of systemic or system-based problems that Liverpool knew would be there. And I think Slot will know the deficiencies of his own formations. And he will be frustrated that some of those were exploited in this game. But it's also frustrating, I think, that Liverpool didn't make more of their chances today. And that actually Forrest did a really good job of, first of all, separating Liverpool out, not allowing them all these close little passes, which they were trying to get into early on, but also cutting off those passing lanes and forcing Liverpool to go wide to Diaz and Salah. People today in my chat were saying, during the live stream, join me on there if you want to come join me, but people today on that live stream were saying, oh, I, I think today Salah's had a poor game, he's not been able to get into it. I don't think he had a lot of service today. I think there are a lot of times where I felt that Salah either had too many players close to him or was very isolated, or we were playing a ball out to Salah and it was just going over his head because guess what? There were just so many people who were just... And he was just sort of looking back and going, okay, good, at least trying to get the ball out to me. Liverpool knew what they wanted to do. They knew what they wanted to exploit. And Forrest went the other way and did a really good job. They played Liverpool in a European fashion today. They went down easily when tackled, which is something that we've always seen in the Champions League. And they tackled really hard, like too hastily on Liverpool, to the point where at one point, I felt like the referee wasn't quite in line with where we needed to be in terms of cards in the game. Yates had a great game. A couple of their other midfielders did a really good job of just harrying Liverpool. They didn't really focus on Kravenberg. They let him have the ball. But then they got McAllister and Jota, the two guys who'd be looking to pick out or who'd be looking to make space. And Liverpool tried to get the ball elsewhere on the field. They tried to get out Diaz, tried to get out of Salah. But they weren't able to. And it shows how important someone like Jota is and how someone like Nuno will be able to exploit Liverpool's tactical weaknesses and Liverpool's lack of familiarity with this system and put them essentially on the back foot. Now, I actually do think Liverpool did play their way into the game relatively well. In the first half, their XG was slowly climbing. There were a couple of times where it made bigger jumps. But ultimately, they didn't create enough. And Nuno did a great job of... It wasn't really a low block. It was more like a mid block. It wasn't really all that low until later on in the game when Liverpool themselves were making their own tactical changes, when you could see that Slot was a bit frustrated with the lack of adaptability within the team. I, I, I wouldn't say he'll ever express that publicly, but I definitely want to see how this team react to the loss, first of all, but also how Slot handles the pressure. I, we'll predict this. There are going to be videos where you will see this from non-Liverpool fans in the coming hours. Calm down about it. Don't worry about it. It'll be all right. Because that's the tactic. Because they want to build Slot up. And then at one point they'll go, oh, well, I always saw this coming. I, you know, it's always because Slot was a system manager, not a player manager. Slot kind of acknowledged it himself. He's like, I've not ever had this volume of games. I've not ever had kind of this magnitude of club to manage, even though Feyenoord are huge and they've been in big competitions. The rotation is a bit of an issue, I think, at this point for Liverpool. They started the game with the same formation and the same players as they did in the previous two games, bar one player for the first game in Joel Kwanzaa. So I do think at this point we're seeing that people are going to talk about the depth at Liverpool. People are going to talk about FSG not giving him the squad that he needs. The substitutes that he made, I think broadly you could see Liverpool were trying to put, trying to confuse Forrest a little bit. 
Last season, I think if this had happened under Klopp, I think we'd have gone, oh, he's going to make some strange substitutes. The game will fade away. It'll finish 1-0. So I don't think all that much has changed. It's the same band of players. It's a similar job that we've had done on us. It's just that Anfield needs to feel a little bit more invincible than this. It needs to feel a little bit harder to come to than that. And I think what we are going to see is a bit of a... People aren't going to fear Anfield in the same way because they feel they can exploit uh, Slot and those guys... But what they will worry about is tactically being exploited by someone like Slot. And so I think we're going to see games where managers want to have a go at Liverpool, where they can try to exploit a lot of our weaknesses, where Slot has got a tactical idea that he wants to execute, but the players aren't quite able to execute it yet. We saw him later on. And I, you know, let, actually, let's not talk about that yet. Let's talk about the early subs. I would have rather have seen one player in that front line go off. I think Salah looked very isolated. I would have rather seen Jota tuck in a little bit and become a bit of a goal threat. Nunes, again, sort of becoming a bit of a like, oh, what are we doing here? Kind of, I'm going to create some chaos type player. He seems to have lost that element to his game or he's not been playing with it. And then Diaz on the left. And actually, so what I'm saying is I would have rather have seen Nunes come off early instead of Hakpo and uh, Nunes come on. And so Salah come off early for Nunes. Nunes through the middle, Jota right, Diaz left, and then maybe Gakpo's in at the 10, I don't know, something like that. But you could clearly see he was battling with international minutes. Quite a few Liverpool players have played a lot of minutes in that time. I know there was a big thing of they've all played 180 or whatever. Yeah, sure. But I also think that doesn't really excuse it. Liverpool had more than enough faculties to be able to get beyond Forest Day. They got Nuno'd, and that's fair enough. But then on top of that, like, you know, having to take McAllister off when they did, did we, was that really the sub to make? Bradley came on, pushing Trent into midfield. It kind of worked with Trent in midfield, frankly. Um, I think Grav still played that holding role, that more reasonable, like, I'm going to come deep role. And then Trent played a little further ahead of that, sometimes 10, sometimes 8, like a transitional 8 to 10. It didn't really give Diaz what he needed. I think I would have preferred Trent to remain wide almost. Again, that right side didn't look right today. It didn't quite feel like it was able to exploit the weaknesses if there were any weaknesses in that Forest side. And the physicality, the way that they counterattack, pushed Liverpool's fullbacks right the way back. So there wasn't that same width that Slot will want to play with. Go wide, go central, go up, go wide, go central. That wasn't quite happening today for Liverpool. And we said it. We said it every time Liverpool have won more recently on this channel. Liverpool will have managers who watch those games and go, I can exploit that. I know what it is that I will do against that team. And they did it perfectly. When they bought Callum hudson and you knew what he was going to do. You knew he was going to sit on that left-hand side, try to cut in, try to get behind Grav or whoever it was on that side and get in front of Konate and slot one in at that far post. I can't really fault Alisson for the goal. I think it was a great shot, a really high-class shot from a relatively, what felt like innocuous position. I know it's not innocuous in terms of where the shot came from, but felt like an innocuous position from Forrest. They kind of lulled Liverpool into a false sense of security and then went down the other end and Callum hudson Doy, boom, straight into it. So it's frustrating, sure. Um, but I, I, on the other side of that, I still think Gravenmuch had a relatively good game. I think he wasn't able to maraud in the way that you want to. A lot of people are angry with Soboslai, not quite sure why. I think he had a couple of misplaced passes today, but broadly I think he was very busy, pressed really well won the ball back very well down the field. I think there were a couple of times where Liverpool passes went awry or they won the ball back and then fell over or won the ball back and expected to get a free kick because Forrest were getting a few of those called. And it never quite got balanced out in the way that those things were getting called. Forrest were going down very easily. Liverpool were not able to sort of keep up with that. It was disrupting Liverpool's rhythm. There was a point where they managed to get some rhythm between 35 and 45 minutes. And it was like, ah, I can see them kicking into that area now. And Forrest got to half time. I don't think they were kicking and screaming, but I think they knew uh, if we'd have continued Liverpool to be able to just tighten that grip, they'd have gotten something in the end. And I think that's my frustration really is coming off the back in the international break. I know we're going to get tired players, those kind of things. But tactically, you would want to see that momentum continue. You would want to see our dominance. They broke our control today. They absolutely got in the way of the slot control that slot wants and stopped Liverpool controlling the game and dictating where they wanted the ball to be. They made Liverpool really uncomfortable. There were times where they tried to make Liverpool play out in weird ways that they wouldn't want to. Again, really well observed from Nuno. 
And I think other managers are going to try and exploit that, but Slot will know that. Slot will set up for that in coming games. He will have known it was coming in this game. He will have tried to prepare the players for it, but I think there's only so long, especially post-international break, that you can do those things. It's just disappointing to lose at home so early on in the season when City seem to be already getting into a rhythm. I know, I, I, think, I personally think a title was probably beyond this team, uh, whether we've got signings or not, but it's still frustrating so early on to have that kind of landing back to earth with a bump moment. I don't think it means at the end of the season. I don't think it means Liverpool are going to drop behind everyone else and lose their heads. There were moments where you can see Trent's getting a bit frustrated in midfield. Gravenbush, I think, kept his head very well. A couple of the players like Nunes didn't quite look like he was in the game at times. Some people said Gakpo looked uh, vacant or wasn't really there. I didn't really see that in the same way. I know he was there for the width. He couldn't really do what Gakpo wanted to do because the central area was quite congested. And there were a couple of times where Salah tried to pass it off to either him or Robbo or Simakas and didn't quite come. I think a lot of people are suggesting we need another left-sided player there instead of Robbo. I think Robbo came back looking pretty fresh. He played this like interesting inside role where it was almost like he became another part of that front line. I like that. I'd love to see more of that. So there are some positives. I think you can see moments where he was underlapping, making it really uncomfortable for Forrest, and they didn't like that at all. Continue with that. Continue with these things. Liverpool now have a tricky run of games, right? Milan on Tuesday, that's a very fast turnaround for Liverpool. Like that is a very fast, I'm just looking through these, very fast turnaround. So it's Milan Tuesday, that was a cancelled West Ham game that we would have played in the EFL Cup. Bournemouth, West Ham, Wolves, Bologna, Palace, Chelsea. We're going to see a lot more teams sit deep against Liverpool in these coming games. Obviously they've got uh, Champions League games in between those. But in the Premier League, we're going to see a lot more teams sitting deep. We're going to see a lot more teams trying to focus in between Trent and Robbo on those sides and exploit the weaknesses of just, you know, trying to get past Canati. Because once you're past them, then obviously they have to catch up and they're in a transitional state. You don't want that if you're a defender. I think what we will see, and for some weird reason today, we saw the role switch, a lot of role switching today in midfield. McAllister sort of switched over to the other side. Grav switched over to the other side. I wonder if that was a way that we wanted to play the ball out. Like we influenced our out of possession play, which then our in possession play that we wanted to play, where Grav needs to play through the midfield, influenced our out of possession play and made Liverpool really not being able to transition in the way they wanted to. I think there are times where you think this seems a little... Com it's a very complex system. Obviously, every football system at the top level is complex, but it seems that the players were sort of getting a bit lost in the milk and the source of that. I get it. I think, personally, they came, they executed, they conquered, and Forrest deserve really good uh, pressure. Uh, like, you know, they deserve a lot of um, uh, congratulations for that. And I, I fully applaud them. I think they've exploited a manager tactically there. I think the team knew that they were getting exploited and they, they were not quite coached to the level where they were able to deal with it. But you could see today there were people who were trying to get a handle on the game, trying to get the control that we wanted, and at times we were very easily just giving it away. Silly passes, long passes that never quite made it, all those kind of things. That will be frustrating for Slot and these guys. So I'm interested to see what you guys think is going to happen next. I think the Milan game will try and see a rubber band effect. Let's see. But I personally also think we might see a draw. I obviously, I, went, I was going to go into the previous game and say Liverpool will lose against Forest. Then we're going to see a draw against Milan. And then I think next weekend we'll see Liverpool, again, having a bit of time to slot, having a bit of time to be able to get back into the run of things. What time is it we play that game next weekend? I just want to see. Uh, so it goes Milan, then Bournemouth at 3 p.m. on the Saturday. And then... Again, midweek for West Ham, three days later. It's coming thick and fast here, guys. Let me know who you thought was the strongest and weakest player from that game. I'd love to know what your thoughts are. Um, I'm probably going to do another breakdown tomorrow with Slot's comments involved and those kind of things. I hope you guys understand where I'm coming from on this one. Uh, I really appreciate you. I'll be in Milan. So come find me. If you're a Liverpool fan over there, you want to go for a drink, you want to meet up, or you want to be on camera, let me know. I'm going to have the GoPro. I'm going to have the cameras. And I'm going to do a little vlog while I'm out there. So, yeah. Appreciate you guys watching the channel. I really appreciate it. And us getting exploited is frustrating. I get the feeling if that happened under clock, we'd feel different. So, I think we get a bit of a hall pass here. But let me know what you think in the comments below. And I'll chat to you guys in a little while. Much love. Bye.